my fellow dream chasers and a very merry on birthday to my fellow Disney fans across the world. Welcome to the latest episode <laughs> of Kingdom of Isolation, where in times of trouble, why not isolate yourself with the magic of Disney? I say merry on birthday because of course we're talking about Alice in Wonderland, released in 1951. I'll drink to that. Oh, I want that. It's such a cool mug. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't anticipating that mug. <laughs> really. So in a way, you do technically have the top hat. Yeah, so I'm just drinking out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I gotta say. This film is just a wacky ride from start to finish. It, oh yeah. I say it makes no sense, and that's what and that's why it makes and it doesn't make but sense, but at the same time, it makes sense because it doesn't make sense. It's yeah. confusing, I know. But of course... Yeah, like, the, the, the bonkers stuff that happens, it makes perfect sense to the characters, but to any rational person, it's like, whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah exactly. But of course, it wouldn't be the Kingdom of Isolation without me having a guest on board. And today, he has showcased his fantastic uh, Mad Hatter... Um, mug uh <laughs> i've got mine as well robot wars i know i'm a big robot wars fan but, nice. uh, but of course robot wars wasn't even around in 1951 but less, it's alan sunter he's a first timer on this show alan welcome along it's a pleasure to be here yeah so yeah this is gonna be absolutely i mean you just said it yourself this is gonna be absolutely bonkers <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so um, so let's so let's get a quick let's get the quick checklist uh, out of the way. Uh, we've got snacks ready. Mm-hmm. We have the tea ready. Naturally. And we uh, and 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 yes, folks, Alan did suggest that we actually have some tea for this. Don't worry, I haven't done anything bizarre with it. We haven't put anything in it to make us taller or shorter. Uh, it's an odd uh, birthday I, party, but we're not going that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the film yet, as is part of the course, I have to put the spoiler alert in because there's, yes. it's inevitable there's going to be people out there that haven't seen these films. Yeah, but but please, you guys, watch it. It's a, it's a fantastic movie. Yeah, that's it, that's it. And, and when, I mean, I mean for, the, for the modern generation, a lot of them are going to be thinking, oh, yeah, the Tim Burton film. Yeah. No, Don't. no. Hey, regarding the Tim Burton uh, Alice films, I will get to those when I cover the live-action remakes eventually i still have the animated films to do i've got the director video sequels yes. to do i've got the pixar films to do on top of all that so yeah this let's is a long not term... run before we can walk yeah it... <laughs> oh come on come on oh, uh, you said <laughs> you said you said we have to run before we can walk no i said let's not run before we can walk Oh, I didn't clock. I didn't clock onto the not part. No, but, but anyway, <laughs> I'll say, I'll say, this is the thing you're going to need to get used to with me, guys. Uh, I do have a very bad tendency of mishearing things. Not the first. Totally <laughs> one, 
not the first time, definitely won't be the last. But nevertheless, let's head through the looking glass and down the rabbit hole as we go through Alice in Wonderland. All right. So, uh, start. So, first notes, uh, right. Uh, first couple of notes for me right out of the gate is, of course, it's one of the staples of films back in the day, uh, for the mm. Disney films especially, is you've got the choir singing over the opening credits. We've seen it before in like, films like Pinocchio with When You Wish Upon a Star. I've mentioned, I mentioned this before in my previous Kingdom of Isolation episode of Cinderella, which you can find top right of your screen. Um, but of course, the bit, one of the big things that helps this particular set of opening credits stand out is the fact that you actually see uh, like still paintings of the characters we're going to be introduced to. Yeah. The and then beautifully done as well. There's some fantastic artwork in this movie. Yeah, massive kudos to the um, uh, to, to the animators and the um, uh, the art directors, especially for being able to put all that together. Yeah. And then speaking of um, uh, the art, by the way, that um, brings me to my first note. There's um, uh, a common ground between Alice in Wonderland and Batman the Animated Series. And do you know what that is? Oh, I haven't. Oh, this will this will be interesting. And uh, and just as a quick heads up, folks, as far as um, how fresh uh, Alice in Wonderland is in my um uh, in memory at the moment. Uh, I just finished watching it uh, uh, in the last, I just finished watching it in the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's how prepared I am for recording this today. <laughs> so, Quite so, right. So anyway, the, the common ground between Alice and the Batman animated series, this is going to be yes. interesting. S specifically in um, the animation, um, the fact that if you look at a lot of um, the backgrounds in uh, Alice in Wonderland, particularly when they're in Wonderland itself, a lot of the backgrounds are either very dark or sometimes pure black. And then that really helps the colors to really stand out and pop. And that's the technique they used on Batman the Animated Series when they did a lot of the drawings on black paper. Ah, that I did that I didn't know about. I mean, I mean, I mean yes, Batman Animated Series, fantastic as a kid, but um but me growing up, I was I was more of a Marvel kid. I was always I was always like into like Marvel, Spider Man, especially <laughs> Spider Man growing up. But uh, but I say that's I say that's very interesting. I didn't even know about that. Mm. I, I don't know if um, uh, Alice did it with black paper, but certainly they do use a lot of darkness to really make the color stand out, and also just to add, you know, kind of a layer of mystery to this place like you know that feeling of yes this is all um fantastic and you know wonderful but is there a danger here you know is it safe to be in this place yeah that's a very that's a very very valid point though but um mm. they, never, nevertheless every day is a school day folks even i'm learning something and i call myself and i, and I call myself in my friend circle one of the biggest disney fans in my friend circle <laughs> But Every so, day is a learning day. Yeah, ab absolutely. I say that. I say, I say that is. I say that. I didn't actually know. But uh, but say hey, that. I say that might actually that might actually be very beneficial as far as the scores are concerned when we get to that portion. Um. So then we actually get the film underway once the end credits are out of mm -hmm. uh, end credits. Opening credits are out of the way. <laughs> Don't worry. I have notes on the. I have notes on the end credits but we'll get to that when we get to yeah. the film but, um, as i am um, so we get introduced to um alice and her sister alice is voiced by uh catherine beaumont um fantastic performance from her yeah absolutely and um and the other character we're introduced to at this point is uh alice's cat uh diner and and we're and the way we're introduced to him is that uh, Alice's sister is uh, giving giving her a history lesson, but um, but uh, uh, kids being kids, uh, especially today, uh, <laughs> she gets she she she's actually pretty bored listening to it, and then and then uh, the oh you you've got you've got it lucky, Alice. You're able to have your lesson like out in the open in fresh air, not uh, not on Zoom. Ah, yeah, I was like, I was like, especially with especially with what we're going through right now. But hopefully, hopefully we get back to some sort of uh, normality by the end of the year. I was, like, I was actually just 
I was actually just saying to Alan uh, before we before we actually started recording is that it's hard to believe that I've actually been doing this series for nearly a year because I actually started this on the because I actually started uh, this series um, effectively on the day Disney Plus launched here in the UK, March twenty fourth, twenty twenty, and of course and of course the first film I talked about it had to be the very first anim- animated uh, Disney film, Snow White, and um, so, so effectively, the se- Kingdom of Isolation series started on the day Disney Plus launched. So how's about that? I've been doing this series effectively for the same amount of time Disney Plus has been live in the UK. Anything special planned for the uh, one-year anniversary? Oh, that, oh, that's actually a valid point. Um, I might. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm, sure I'll be able to, I'm sure I'll be able to figure something out. Um, oh, yeah. I mean... I mean, I mean, I mean, even if even if it's just something as simple as uh, the top ten films that I've talked about on on this series so far, even Ooh, if it's just something that would be cool. And and this will be going based on the scores that I've given each of the films throughout the series. Yeah, but uh, but don't worry. Once I once I get all the way up to Frozen Two, mm. and possibly Raya and the Last Dragon. But mind you, I'll probably have to wait until that comes out on Disney Plus before I talk about that. But um, but once I get up to Frozen Two, that's probably when I'm gonna do a top ten of my favorite Disney films. That's no mean feat, given the fact we've got nearly <laughs> sixty films to choose from. But um, but yeah, the um, but I say with with what Alice talked about, um, like when she's getting bored of the history lesson, talking to Dinah, foreshadowing the madness that's about to follow. <laughs> There we go. But um, but then um, but then once the history lessons more or less uh, out of the way, um, Alice spots a uh, white rabbit. Who, yeah. Yeah. Goodness me. The white rabbit, if I can, uh, is voiced by uh, Bill Thompson, who yes. also who also voices uh, a dodo. In, in, yeah, in I actually looked into um, uh, the casters for this. I was surprised to learn that most of the cast of this movie have been in like tons of other Disney projects, either in small parts or in you know live action appearances and uh, animated shorts and stuff like that. It's like this movie is packed with Disney alumni. <laughs> yeah, I say, I say, and it's it's not the first time I've it's not the first time I've brought it up uh, throughout the um uh, throughout this series, um because you've got because you've got other names. Uh, we, so you've got a lot of uh, familiar names here, especially from back mm. then, because you've because you've got Sterling Holloway, especially. Um, oh yeah, because okay, he was in, he was in Dumbo, and he and he voices uh, the Cheshire Cat. You've got Werner Felton, who I who I mentioned in my Cinderella review, which That's I, right. which went up on my channel um, last week. She does the Queen of Hearts. Mm. There's actually this. Um, uh... Great story about Sterling Holloway. I know, getting um, a little bit off topic, but I I can't not mention this. Okay. Um, when whenever um, Jim Cummings is voicing Winnie the Pooh, there's one sentence he says which always gets him into character, and he remembered the sentence from when he was, um, I guess, first getting into voice acting, and he happened to okay. be in a he happened to be in a cafe in Hollywood where mm-hmm. Sterling Holloway was at the next table, and because. Like Sterling Holloway's Winnie the Pooh voice was basically his voice. So Jim Cummings is just sitting there minding his own business and he heard this voice across the way saying, I believe I will have the chowder. <laughs> and so he's, he's, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant! Okay. So, he, so whenever Jim Cummings wants to get into character, he says, I believe I will have the chowder. Oh my... <laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> that I not be often I'm left lost for words, folks. But that is just wow. Yeah. Yeah. I say I say def, def, I say I say definitely some definitely something we're gonna need to bring up. Uh, de- definitely something I'm gonna need to bring up, depending on who I have on board when we get to the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Mm-hmm. But we'll we'll get to that eventually. Yes. But uh, I say, I say that's, that's amazing. I didn't. I say, fantastic. How's about that? 
I see, I see, th- these are the sort of stories that just that just in a way just make make your day just, just yeah, like, oh yeah that is they're amazing my, they're my favorite kind of stories yeah um so anyway um i'll say the i say the white rabbit um I'll say, this is something i have referenced in my notes numerous times that um, I'll say, he, he keeps saying he's late now yeah the biggest question is what is he late for? Why is he always? Why is he always saying he's late? What's he late for? Yeah, and we never I, actually. And, and, and my, the, the biggest thing that grinds my gears about it is that we never actually find out what he's actually late for. No, my my only guess can be like, is, does he think um, uh, he's late for the arrival of the queen? No, that can't be it, since he arrives pretty much bang on time. On time, I'll, yeah. I'll be, I'll be puffed out, but still. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 like, so, so that's, one of the, that's one of the things we never actually find out, what he's yeah. actually late for. No. <laughs> and I, I kind of love that we never get a definitive answer for that. <laughs> just, like, just, 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 an, just another little hint of the madness that's in this yeah. film. Yeah. Maybe he's not even late for anything. He just felt like saying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! But um, you say because because what he does say specifically is that he's late for a significant date. Now yeah. that could mean anything. It could be yeah. an anniversary. <laughs> it could be a birthday. It could be an unbirthday. It could be something else entirely. Well, but we, we never find this, this out. Well, we do learn that it's the, it's the Queen's unbirthday, so maybe <laughs> that, that that's a possibility. But but, uh, but so we'll, we'll get to the whole unbirthday stuff. Uh, oh, shortly. oh, the unbirthday stuff! Oh, my goodness, me. yeah. But um, then but yeah, uh, the, the, rabbit, the rabbit supposedly is late for something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Supposedly, we say that in air quotes, but uh, but um, but Alice, being as curious as she is, she decides to follow the rabbit into the rabbit's hole, which is why I mentioned it before we started actually going through the story. Like going through the story. Yeah, this story is actually where where the fra- I think it's where the phrase um, "going down the rabbit hole" comes from. Yes, alongside one or two other things, which I'll which I'll bring up um, later. Mm. But um, uh, Alice. Falls down the rabbit hole. She, and then, my goodness me! You just you just hear the the xylophone, and you, how do we describe what's actually on screen at that point? Oh, uh, bizarre! Like <laughs> that. That's the the best word that comes to mind because it's you know. Um, d- uh, amazing what you're seeing, but but still like. You're what, like, what, what, what is, is going this? on? What, what is this? <laughs> yeah, but um, she manages to catch up with the uh, the rabbit, and then mm. finds, and then goodness, so it's probably like at least half a dozen doors before she actually gets to the actual door that needs to be opened. <laughs> and but of course, the door is supposedly locked. Mm. And then you see, and then you see the potions. That, and then you see the potion that she has to. Uh, from, yes, from and, the, and you meet the um, potion bottle she needs to drink from. Yeah, and you meet uh, the character of the talking doorknob, who wasn't actually um, a character in the books. They just decided, well, you know what? Why not? Let's just al- make the doorknob talk as well. <laughs> it's already bonkers enough as it is. Why not make the doorknob talk? <laughs> that, that Why was- not? That, 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 that's that's pretty much that's that the phrase that can sum up a lot of this movie. Why not? I see, I see, that, that's probably how the pitch meeting would have gone yeah. when actually <laughs> making this film. In the pre-production phase, it would have been. I think you just summed it up there, Alan. It's just a case of let's make the doorknob talk. Let's let's sure. make. Why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. I think that would have that would have pretty much been the pitch meeting in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, but um, she does drink. Um, she drinks from the potion 
bottle and then and, and then and I like I like her I like her logic in this scene you know better um, inspect it first because if you drink too much from a bottle marked poison it's almost certain to disagree with one sooner or later yeah and you you can't fault her logic but but of but of course this but of course but of course those that know the source material very well know the logic just goes completely out the window almost yeah, well, immediately. Well, logic, <laughs> or like they're in this case. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I was saying, um, I say, and then she gets the um. Drinks, drinks the, drinks the, the drink me potion. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then, and then shrinks down, uh, and then ends up eating a, and then, and then, uh, like a couple, couple of moments later, ends up eating a biscuit that says, well, so since you've called it the drink, the drink me, um, whatever. The it was. drink me drink, and now that's the, a, the eat me, the eat me biscuits. Yes, that's the one. The, the, that's it. She has one of the eat me biscuits, and then, boom becomes a giant and oh uh, and then and then she's just I like oh. might have actually i think that might have been um an experiment a little while ago to try to uh recreate the the drink me because she mentions um all the different flavors uh um cherry tart pineapple custard and roast turkey and, oh, and i think and i think they also mention um hot buttered toast as well in the book. Someone actually tries to, I think it was Heston Blumenthal, tried to oh make a boy. drink. He tried to make a drink that recreated all of those tastes. I, I didn't look into it, so I don't know if it was um, successful or not, but, uh, but of course it was Heston Blumenthal who tried to do that. That's the sort of thing he was known for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which uh, and uh, and that actually brings me on to my next note. Uh, next couple of notes is the fact that um, the uh, it, it is a very bizarre list of ingredients. If you ask me, it's a very bizarre list of ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but of course the um, but see, but see, with the eat me biscuit, she's like right to the roof. Um, but uh, it ends up. Uh, and with with how with how large the tears are, goodness me, Alice, are you trying to flood the place? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, that, yeah, that always um, uh, amazed me. Like, good God, woman, how big are your tears? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, the, the the end of the day, uh, she she gets she gets through after drinking from the uh, the, uh, the the the, sh the shrinking potion again. The shrinking potion, yes. Um, so there's that, uh, and then and that, she... and that poor, uh, that poor doorknob just like, <laughs> yeah, because it, it's, I say, it's, it always amazes me how they actually managed to create those sort of effects, uh, yeah. for, 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 for the voice acting, especially. Say, yeah. It always amazes me how they managed to do that, especially, especially back then, because they would, because they wouldn't have had all the, um, the uh, the editing software that we have today because it was 1931. They didn't have computers back then. They probably literally just um, they probably literally just had uh, the voice actor in the booth. So, so, something to that effect, folks. But I say, I say, that's, I say, I say, um, I say, what, what are the things that I did point out in the uh, in my Cinderella review? In the previous episode, is that uh, with, with the mice singing while they're making Cinderella's dress? It's always intrigued me how they managed to get the voices to sound as high pitched as they do. Mm, I, I imagine they would have probably, um, you know, uh, um, had the voice actors ha had the voice actors saying their lines at a bit of a lower and slower pitch than normal, then spin it up in the editing. Oh. Like 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 what they used to do with um, uh, Woody Woodpecker. So that's how he gets to. So that's how Woody does the laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even pick up on that. <laughs> but um, but well, I, I can I can imagine that that's the kind of stuff they would have um, done back then. You know, like tricks in the recording booth to, you know, then be edited into their high-pitched normality, you know? Yeah. 
but um but there we but there we go for, so there we go um but anyway uh alice gets through the um gets through the flood that she created through the through the keyhole and then we get introduced to tweedle dumb and tweedle d and well, then no, she... we we're, 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 it's, it's when she's to the um uh dodo first because she's um there we go. sailing along in in the bottle and, <laughs> and oh, yeah, oh yes dodo. that that part yes yes completely forgot about that which and i actually the dodo um short um singing as a sailor's life is a life for me <laughs> yeah not a, um... I I always love um, the lyric and and I never never ever do a thing about the weather for the weather never ever does a thing for me. <laughs> I don't know why, but I love that lyric. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And um, that's it. That's it. So one of the things that caught my attention, as far as as far as the um, as far as the actual melody of the song was concerned, it sounds it, to me. I'm not sure if you picked it up either, but um, but it. It sounds very, very similar to the music that's used as the theme for Blue Peter. Yes, um, and that's based on um, uh, an actual bit of sailors' music. Uh, oh, oh I, I forget what it's called. Something like um, the Sailor's Pipe, something like that. But but it's based on an, on an actual bit of nautical music. I'll, I'll right. I, I need to I need to Google that. Like yeah. the well. Well, according to the according to the soundtrack, it's called the Sailor's Hornpipe. That's the one. Yeah. But yeah, that's an actual piece of um, sailor music. Which is very interesting. Mm. But um, was a uh, it's 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 one of like at least emphasis on at least a dozen songs throughout the entire film i think it's difficult yeah. it is very yeah, this... difficult to keep track of how many songs are actually in the soundtrack yeah this one disney movie must have the highest number of um songs and musical sequences in it yeah R regardless of how short regardless of how long or short they are to begin with yeah but uh, but once that's, all... that's how you that's how you get the most songs in one movie. Make them all short and sweet. <laughs> yeah, because because uh, the sound because the soundtrack here because uh, uh, the soundtrack here it's effectively the same length as the film. <laughs> Some someone must have known what they were doing when putting the, when actually releasing the soundtrack. Someone must oh, have known yeah. what they were doing. Oh yeah, but um. But, uh, but so once that sequence is out of the way, then we get introduced to Tweedledum and Tweedledee, who Alex actually put, she actually introduces them the wrong way round. She says Tweedledee and Tweedledum. It's, that's the wrong way. I mean, m just a minor nitpick, folks, but that's the wrong way round. It's Tweedledum <laughs> and Tweedledee, not the other way round. I mean, six and a half a dozen, really. That's, that's, that's true, that's true. And, um... Uh, uh, the next one, uh, the next song, all uh, be it, all be it's like um, I'll say the next couple of songs being like less than a minute, well, just over a minute, <laughs> and uh, like we're not we're, we're not wax works. How do you do handshakes? This that and the other, but um, the uh, the he Tweedledum and Tweedledee. They, I'm just going to call them the Tweedles. That makes it a little easier for myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think they, they point out that Alice needs to use, um, they need to use, she needs to use manners. And I'm sitting here, and I, this is how I actually typed it in my notes. Manners in a world of nonsense. <laughs> that, that is legitimately how I typed it, guys. Well, I imagine that's, um, that was part of, uh, you know, um, Lewis Carroll's uh, critique of society at the time, manners in a world of nonsense, because, you know, it was written in the very um, prim and proper sort of, uh, you know, that, uh, th that general era of society of no matter how silly things are, we must keep up appearances of being prim and proper and mannered. Ah, interesting. Mm. I was like, I was like, nice to get a little, nice to get a little, um, um, uh, in, in information regarding uh, the source material uh, as well. So, uh, once that, 
so once they've uh, properly introduced themselves, we get to like a uh, we get to like a proper music sequence, which is, which could actually work as one of Disney's silly symphonies back then. It would have yeah. been yeah, the walrus and the carpenter. Oh boy. You know, you're actually right. That would have worked perfectly as one of the silly symphonies. Yeah. I say that that's that's what Disney called their um that's what Disney called their their shorts back then. I mean, Warner Brothers, they had their they had their uh, merry melodies with of course the Looney Tunes. So, <laughs> so I say def definitely a fair comparison if you think about it. Yeah. Um, so, um, so the Walrus and the Carpenter. It's one of it's one of the poems that uh, that Lewis actually wrote that was used for uh, the film. So, it's a case of long story short. You've got you've got well a Walrus and a Carpenter. They're on a beach. Uh, then the Walrus manages to essentially become a Pied Piper and get the baby oysters out of the water and he eats them all. <laughs> I mean, well, no, the, like both um, uh, the walrus and the carpenter are going to eat them all, but the greedy walrus scoffs them all himself. Yeah, and the carpenter is just absolutely livid at this point. <laughs> I love um, uh, that bit where um, uh, the walrus says, um, oh, no, well, we need um, a loaf of bread with this. Then the carpenter goes into the kitchen and the walrus is about to start scoffing. Then the carpenter sticks it in and says, how about seven much salt and pepper with that? And he's oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just try to make himself look as... As, in, as innocent, innocent as, as possible. As innocent as possible, that's the word I was looking for. I was trying to... I was trying to I was trying to think of something along the lines of less suspicious of something. Yeah. Like that. But, <laughs> but in, in innocent works, innocent works. That walrus is sus. <laughs> Among Us references, folks. If you haven't played Among Us, you, you if you haven't played Among <laughs> Us, you won't get the reference. I say, that that Among Us song is it's, it's so catchy. It's faster, it's faster, it's faster. I say, that bit's just so catchy. Oh yeah, but. Um, but like I said, Among Us, fantastic game. But um, my goodness me. Uh, but, uh, I'll, say, you know, I'll say that sequence all ends when you've got the carpenter just like red with fury. And it's just like, <laughs> just like, I'm going to get you for this. You were supposed to share those oysters with me. Or words to that effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So into the... So into the next, so into the next portion, you got Alice tra continuing to track the rabbit, who continues to say he's late again. What is he late for? We never find out. We can only guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but 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 but, but, I think, but I think that's what adds. I think that's what adds to the uh, the genius of this film. I think you never find out yeah. why he's late, so it's up yeah. to the audience to try and fill in the blanks. Uh huh. Let's. <laughs> And yeah, like th there are some um, some films and some stories where they leave um, stuff up to interpretation, but you can feel like they didn't even want to bother coming up with something. But but in, but in a case like this, it almost doesn't really matter why he was late. You just need to know that he is. Yeah, there you there you go. So, so, sometimes let's say there you go. You just summed it up right there. Sometimes you don't need an explanation. You just need to know something without an explanation. Yeah. Um, so then we get to. So then we get to the uh, the Mary Ann housemaid. Ah uh, uh, yes. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> uh, the rabbit mistakes Alice for his housemaid. <laughs> Which just how she's a human, she's not a rabbit. How d d d does um, he have a uh, housemate who just happens to look the same or similar to Alice? Or it, again, is 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 the rabbit just bonkers and making stuff up? Like yeah, just... what what what's going on? I don't know. Yeah, and I love how um you know uh, of course Alice um objects to all this, but still goes along with it to try and find um to find the kid gloves because you know she's she's nice like that yeah let's say just just uh just doing what just doing what um just doing what we would do in a situation they need help 
I mean, me, I'm just like, yeah, I I go to help without a moment's hesitation. Yeah, like, all right, fine, I'll 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 do it, but you know, I want some explanations after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but then, but then, uh, we, and then we get more, and then we got. And then we end up with more eat me biscuits. Yeah, and I love how she just casually says, "Oh, thank you. Don't mind if I do." Did she not like, learn from the after last time, Alice? I know. Did she not learn from last time? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But um... and I love the way um, uh, they did this. Um, I don't know if you know, but for um, a lot of. Uh, the visualization of the story. They actually yeah. had um, the the actors recorded their lines, and then they um, got basically in costume as the characters and acted out the scenes as a reference for the animators. And for this one in particular, Li the live action references. Yes. Yes. Um, and for this one, they actually basically built a, a small house structure for Catherine Beaumont to climb inside, stick her arms out, and, like, her, her head's, like, pushed down by the roof. <laughs> oh, dear. I was like, beggars believe how they would have managed, beggars believe how they would have managed that as a live-action reference, but, um... A, a lot of try, a lot of trial and error, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I say, and, and it's things like that that actually help, um, help us appreciate these older Disney yeah. films, especially. Yeah, the amount of effort that goes into yeah, stuff like that. Exactly, because one of the things I did, one of the things I pointed out when talking about Snow White, is mm. that transformation sequence of the queen turning into the old lady. That transformation sequence, nineteen thirties, no computers, just yeah, wow, amazing yeah. how that was done. And of course, you know, computers do have their place in filmmaking, but there's just something about just Doing that it sheer amount of like, Doing uh, it as like practically both as possible. Yeah, both require a lot of work, just different yeah. kinds of work. Exactly. But as, as um, I like, and like I say, it's things like that that actually help us appreciate these older Disney films more. And I think I heard somewhere that when um, the actress who played uh, the evil queen um, played the old lady, she got that um, old lady voice just right, just by taking out her dentures. Well, that was about that, folks. That was about <laughs> that. But, um, but of course, the rabbit gets help from the dodo who then uh, who then gets help from bill the lizard yes now interesting little factoid regarding bill the lizard um so i'll see if i can find it yeah references in other disney films that's what it is uh bill mm. the lizard whereabouts are we there we go that's what we're after references in other disney films uh, Bill the Lizard is also one of Professor Rattigan's henchmen in yeah. Basil the Great Mouse Detective, believe it or not. Yeah. Let's you've got this, um, you've got the theory of, uh, you know, all the um, uh, Pixar movies are connected. I wonder if anyone's ever tried to connect all the uh, all the animated Disney films. Oh, that, oh, that, that would, that would, oof. That would yeah. definitely that would definitely take that would definitely take a while because because of course I mean it's a valid point you've brought up regarding uh, the pic, regarding the, the Pixar uh, films because 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 uh, they like have little Easter eggs that reference previous films and future films yeah. and of course and of course and of course a couple of staples at this point you can't go through a Pixar film without either the Pizza Planet truck or my personal <laughs> favorite a one one three. <laughs> which is because which is, because like, like, because the, the a one one three is actually um a classroom at um at a, uh it, it's it's the, it's one of the animation rooms at uh, a film school in california and it's it's somehow become a a regular it's some, somehow become a recurring easter egg in their uh, pixel films i did not know that yeah that's like, that's like, that's like, it's, it's one of those cases where you can't go through a Pixar film without the Pizza Planet truck popping up at some point or A113. Yeah. 
Yes, 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 and, and me over the last couple of years, especially, it's a case that, yeah, I'm, yes, I guess I'm just like keeping my eye out to point to see if I can spot the pizza plan truck or the A113. Some of them were easy to spot, some of them not so much, and you have to dig a little deeper. It's like a Marvel movie without a Stan Lee cameo. It just feels wrong. Yeah, exactly. But mind, but mind you that, but mind you, they're not going to be able to do any more Stan Lee cameos well, now. Y- well, yes, of course. Like, okay, you like, you y- you have a legit excuse now. <laughs> but um, that's it, that's it. It, it. it was all it was, it was always fun to be able to point out those um, Stan Lee cameos. Yeah. So yeah, um, Alice, uh, um, <laughs> in a rather rather sticky situation, <laughs> yeah. trapped in a house. <laughs> and and the dodo is looking for matches to try and effectively burn the house with Alice still inside. Yeah. Are you <laughs> trying they, to kill her? Well, yeah, because they think, oh, the, she suddenly um, uh, grew large and is ruining the house. Clearly, she's a monster. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I, I love how they just accept it. Oh, well, well, clearly, this is some kind of monster. Well, gotta smoke it out. <laughs> yeah, and I know it's it's just really really bizarre that they that's the first thing they go to. It's a monster. What do we do with monsters? Kill them. Have you seen Frankenstein? We know how to deal with this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like like the like the classic Frankenstein, nineteen thirty one, I believe it was. Nineteen thirty one. Yeah. yeah. Torches. Get your pitchforks and torches here. <laughs> yeah. But um, but so, after- so of course you, you know, Alice needs to get out a dodge now. Yeah. yeah, effectively. And how does she manage to do this? By eating one of the carrots. Of course. Nothing. Nothing. Just to bring up. Just to bring up the whole pitch meeting fiasco. Uh, right. Uh, right, folks. Uh, right. She's she's in this house. How are we going to get her to shrink back down? Oh, I don't know. How about we have her eat a carrot? Why? Just. Just because. She, Let's have her eat a carrot. Fig- Why not? She, she figures if she eats something other than the biscuit, it should have the opposite effect of the biscuit. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Put it into the script. <laughs> you know what? Again, just yeah. Again, sure. just why not? Yep. Everything else is weird and making no sense today. Might as well try anything. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I love how. Honestly, the rabbit tries to protect his carrots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of course that, because of course that whole thing, the stereotypes, mice like cheese, rabbits like carrots. Hedgehogs like chili like... dogs. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. I, say, I, say, I love the fact they did actually make a reference to that in the Sonic film. I say the Sonic film is actually really good. Jim Carrey oh, in yeah. his element as Dr. Amen. That's the sort of role he was born to play. I just yeah, thought but, but, between between um, uh, Jim Carrey and Jim Cummings, it seems the best way to interpret Robotnik is just get somebody with the initials JC to play him. <laughs> oh, yeah, because yeah, it, uh, it was in the, uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon that Jim Cummings did. Sat, uh, Sat AM, yeah. Sonic Sat, yeah, Sonic Sat AM, the best one for, yes. for a lot of fans. <laughs> Where Robotnik sounded his most devious. That thing. is actually pretty spot on. That is actually pretty spot on. <laughs> uh, it's, it's especially it's especially bad when he does the. Did you say you had prisoners? Oh, that's good. That is that is that is very disturbing, folks. I'm definitely not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> then my um, job here is done. <laughs> Oh, but, but that, that's the great thing with voice acting. I say if you can if you can nail a character, it's and, just and I just think about the carrots. I love um uh after um you know the rabbit's protecting the carrots and um, Alice pulls um both him and the carrot up. I love how he brandishes the carrot like a sword. <laughs> <laughs> and and then Alice is just like nunch, thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I mean that that I mean that part was very clever with how. The- oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, but but you know what? Like, um, kudos to Alice. Her plan works somehow. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then once that's all 
and then once she manages to uh, escape the um, the near fireball she was about to um, yeah yeah but her, her plan works um, too well because now she's tiny again yeah you'll see, you'll see kids <laughs> and I love when when um, uh, the rabbit again realizes he's late and and like, runs right, off right, 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 I need to go see you later I'm late I'm late I'm late I'm late and so, so I was like, well, wait, I still need to know what you're late for. And the dodo notices this tiny little girl going at the house and says, Hi, oh, young lady, do you have a match? <laughs> not, not noticing that um, the monster has disappeared, but now there's just a tiny girl just walking by. Yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's just another Wednesday in Wonderland. <laughs> yep. Or whatever day it is, but uh, yeah. it. it's it's a fair analogy. Yeah. Do um, do they have days in Wonderland? Who knows? Well, they 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 have um, calendars apparently, so I I guess they do. But like maybe there's um, thirty two days in in the month or whatever. Let's say thirty two days, probably thirteen months, and there's maybe twenty five <laughs> hours in the day. <laughs> Who knows? But um, but then we get into probably probably one of my probably my favorite section of the film where you've got where you've got Alice in the Garden of Flowers and probably my favorite song from the soundtrack in the Golden Afternoon. Now, oh, that's, that's a beautiful song. Yeah, that's the sort that's the sort of song I could actually see being used over the end credits of the film, with, especially with how. Especially with how the song ends, just the build up with the timpani drums, and then it ends with the cymbal crash. That's the sort of thing I could have seen at the end of yeah. uh, in in the end credits of the film. It's a nice um, change of pace as well, because um, up till now we've had um, all the um, hilarious and wacky stuff going on, but then you've got this genuinely really lovely and calming song. Yeah. And then sure, and sure. Um, if you really um, uh, listen to the lyrics, they make no sense. Like um, I think they mentioned uh, um, every dog and caterpillar, and you've got like caterpillars that look like cats. cats and dogs. Yeah, I was I was I was I, was, I, was, I, was, I did manage to spot. I did manage to spot that. I was like, yeah, like like it's a little bit like that. You're like, hold on, but then you're just um, swept away with uh, the lovely music again. You're like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah and then um but then but then it just go but then it gets back to the cl- it just gets back to the classic haywire nonsense oh. and, and then it's where they, where they try where they try to figure out what kind of um flower, flower Alice she is. is so, and so the- she of course points out well i'm I'm not a flower. Some things that must mean you're a weed yeah just just those sort of assumptions yeah. But um, but at the, but at the end of but at the end of the day, she manages she manages to escape, even though even after being called a weed and the and then you've got and then you've got flowers like being harassed being yeah. harassed by these flowers. Yeah, and some of the flowers sound like cats and dogs, making reference to the song earlier. Yeah, dearie, dearie me. But um, uh, but after that, but after but after that, um escapade she ends up uh encountering uh, a caterpillar uh, who's smoking from one of those hooker thingies yeah yeah i was like, I was like it's, it's, it's something that's something that's in like sort of like um sort of like middle eastern territory mm-hmm. so, so, something along those lines uh so, 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 some of some of my friends have actually uh used those uh, before it's it's not it's not like it's not something I'm going to see myself doing because uh, cause for starters nah. I don't, don't smoke never have never will no no I I I don't go in for that kind of thing either yeah I was, uh, I, was, I I just I, was, I don't really I don't really get I mean I mean don't get me wrong the the actual device is interesting and all but it's not yeah. something I could see myself using on a daily basis yeah like you can um, appreciate it but it's but you don't want to partake in it exactly. So, you don't have to like it, but you can appreciate it. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it, it, exactly. You can appreciate something without actually partaking like, of it. I'm like, um, I'm uh, interested in you know um, vapes, even though I don't vape. You know. Yeah. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, in a way, in a way, they're safer, but at the same time, it's still yeah, you're, you're still like putting. It's like, still technically a form of smoking, so. Yeah, except with more chemicals. Yeah. But you know, there's a lot like more power to you, vapors. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but of course, this is the point where we get introduced to the caterpillar, who is singing a song about vowels. <laughs> yeah. Why vowels specifically? Maybe because um, uh, with the little um, H he has on top of that to bring out the smoke. <laughs> hey, E I O U. Yeah, but um, as they, as they, as they, he asks numerous times, "Who are you? Who are you?" <laughs> Have you do- have you actually done voice acting before? Because there's, um, there's a pretty spot on. <laughs> not um, uh, professionally, but I am hoping to um, break into that world. Well, Disney, I hope you get I hope you get catch wind of these uh, this. Uh, <laughs> I hope you catch wind of this series because uh, we might have uh, somebody uh, here that might be uh, an eligible my, candidate my, uh, for your my next star, project. My star now link and my spotlight are down below. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, but uh, but uh, another thing I another thing I managed to uh, another thing that really stood out for me during this this sequence uh, it's the it's uh, when the caterpillar tells her to uh, keep her temper when just a few moments later again this this ties back into Cinderella with uh, the king like I say being patient but you see the exact opposite. Keep yeah. your temper, I, I think, but the caterpillar does the exact opposite. Yeah, I, 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 if I remember correctly, um, uh, when um, in the book, when uh, the caterpillar says, um, keep your temper, like uh, Alice says, is that all? But inside, she's like ready to snap. <laughs> I think we'd all be at this point, given the madness that we've just seen. Yeah. But... But once, but once, uh, but once that's it, say, it gets to the point where the temper just builds up so much that uh, the caterpillar somehow becomes a butterfly. He he, he, dis- he, make, he uses his hooker to make himself disappear into a puff of smoke, so that all that's left are his shoes and butterfly now. Yeah. Was that in, um, and then and then how to, and then how to alter the alter her size? She uses the mushroom. And then yeah, she... one one side will make you grow taller, the other side will make you grow shorter. Yeah, and then she somehow manages to strike a balance, and yes. she's back to her original height. I mean, that, I mean yeah. that took I mean took a what three attempts? Yes, yes, Cause, um, yeah, cause, yes, because I think because um, uh, you've, you've got the doorknob incident, you've yeah, got she, she, you've mm. got the doorknob incident, you've got the house. Yes. And now you've got this. So yeah, so th- this is the third sequence where yeah, yeah she's managed to strike and, and, a balance. And in that uh, particular bit, first um, she doesn't know which um, which side of which will make her bigger and, and taller. So she takes him a bite of the one that makes her big, and she ends up like in a tree where this yeah. bird thinks she's a serpent. Ah. <laughs> uh? <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> well, I th- well, I th- well, I think I, well, I, th- I, th- I, th- I think definitely safe to say, folks. When I was actually trying to put a, uh, the list together of who I wanted to jump on board for each of the uh, each of the films, because I'm I'm trying to focus on like one decade at a time. Yes. Uh, when putting my when putting my guest list together, I think we definitely made a great choice having Alan on board because I uh, I think I think at this point uh, w- with the way we're both interacting, we're both just as mad as each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it helps that um, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, I think, I think, I think. Um, my previous guest Ellie said Cinderella was one of her favorite um, uh, mm. Dis- uh, Disney films. I say so. There we go, two in a row, folks. Where you've got people talking about their favorite Disney film, and yep. uh, do- and uh, and don't worry, folks. I'll get to my favorite Disney film eventually. All right. Okay. But but um but uh, but 
all I'll say is it's from a very significant period of our childhood, especially. Ah. And that's all I'll say on the matter. We'll get to that particular era later on. Hopefully we get to that era. Hopefully I should be able to get to that era at some point, maybe during the summer. All right. Interesting, we'll interesting. But of course that all depends on how quickly I get through the others beforehand. Yes. So yeah, um, Alice is now normal size again. Yeah, if we can even call it normal at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, and this is where we see the Cheshire Cat for the first time. Ah, yes. Voiced by, of course, the legendary Sterling Holloway, who we have mentioned earlier on. And mm. I, I mean, one, one particular line that stands out is that uh, most everyone is mad here. You may have noticed that I'm not all there myself. <laughs> yeah. But, so. I love how um, uh, he's um, um, introduced, like, as uh, an, an echoey voice reciting uh, Jabberwocky. Apparently, they were um, originally going to have uh, a sequence in the film with the Jabberwock, but uh, I think they yeah. either decided that it, it either was unnecessary or maybe even a bit scary like too scary yeah i so say th there was actually a deleted song while you're on the subject uh beware yeah. the jabberwock which was just effectively a co uh, uh, a chorus singing it referring to the um referring to the deleted den um, character but uh, but of course that song didn't actually m make the cut mm. but um yeah, probably because they thought it either like messed up with the pacing or maybe it was a bit too much. May very well have been the case. But um but uh, on on the uh advice, if we can even call it that, of the Cheshire Cat, <laughs> Alice comes across the Mad Hatter and the March Hare at the unbirthday party. Yep. And I and I think this is probably my favorite um bit, mostly because I just Maybe love um film. yeah. Yeah, I, I love the bonkers performance of Edwin as as the Mad Hatter. Like that yeah. was that was one of the most perfect bits of casting for this. Yeah. As I mean I mean I mean not very often you actually get spot on uh casting, yeah. but you've but you've just summed it up right there. Um, in, in fact, I'd actually, I'd actually say um, across the board, the castings of the characters in this version are are all pitch perfect. Yeah, I, say, I, th I think that definitely just goes to show the amount of time that they actually put into the uh, the pre production phase of yes, these and, films. and the amount of the amount of passion they poured into it too. Yeah, definitely. I say, especially especially for those crazy roles like the White Rabbits, Mad yeah. Hatter March here, and especially especially the Queen of Hearts. Pretty big departure yeah. from Werner Felton's previous role in Cinderella. <laughs> like, you, you couldn't get more polar opposite. Yeah, there you go. I mean, you, you go from, you go from the, the fairy godmother in <laughs> Cinderella. You go from the fairy godmother in Cinderella, kind, innocent, happy to help, to the Queen of Hearts. And to, to Donald Trump in a dress. Effectively, yes! <laughs> It's, it's brilliant, but I love, but I love that. It's like like the meme. Um, find someone who can do both. Well, Werner Felton could do both. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but um, and then we, and then we have the uh, and then we, of course we have the on birthday. We have the on birthday song. Now, mm. as I so this is something I did actually put into um, did actually put into my notes uh, as well. Who doesn't want an on birthday? Oh yeah. Although, wouldn't that get it, like if you celebrated that every day? Wouldn't that get a bit boring? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's very true. So, okay, it's so like, that's like these um, these uh, people I've heard who I've heard of who celebrate Christmas every day, and I'm like, but surely that would you know rob it of the novelty. Yeah, uh, so I, I've I've actually I've actually got a friend who is I wish I was joking when I say this is practically obsessed with Christmas. To the point, and it's it, it's at a uh, and it, the obsession is at a point where he even even sometimes when when uh, he gives gives me a ring, he's like, "Happy Christmas to you," and I'm just like, and I'm sitting here like, 
not Christmas. Yeah, like, like, but I mean, sure. Um, I, can, but live, I can't even be. I can't even be mad at him for it. No, like um, live um, your life with the Christmas spirit of jollity and like giving and stuff like that. But to yeah. literally like have decorations and tinsel up and eating a roast turkey dinner every day. It's like, yeah. m mustn't that get like tediously repetitive? Yeah. But I, I don't know. Like Again, you know, different strokes for different folks, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, and if it does absolutely. make, and, and if it does make you happy, then more power to you. Yeah. And um, I don't, I don't get it, but I'm glad you do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and on top of the Mad Hatter in March, hey, you actually, you actually see the Dormouse who's kept inside the teapot for yeah. some bizarre reason. <sighs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know, but all right. <laughs> yeah. And then and I, I love how um drowsy the Dormouse sounds. I've no idea why. There's a way the Dormouse delivers all the lines like this. I don't know <laughs> why. It, it just it, it just feels it, yeah, sounds, the, the Dormouse it just sounds just, really flat. Yeah, and I I don't know why, but it but okay. Yeah. Um but um I mean do they uh I mean, I mean, two films in a row that I actually managed to point out a continuity error. Uh, oh. I, managed, I managed to point one out in uh, uh, Cinderella, uh, which, uh, which you can find uh, top right in the uh, Kingdom of Isolation playlist. Um, but yeah, the continuity error is there's one point where they actually managed to cut the saw, effectively saw a teacup in half, and yet the tea stays in as normal. But in the very next shot, it's back as one piece. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but, but but with something like um, Alice would we actually call I, it a continuity error given how bonkers the film is already well no like in terms of um, filmmaking it like it, it most certainly wasn't intentional like it, it yeah. probably was just an animation error but but in a film like this it kind of doesn't matter one way or the other like it, you can accept it oh that cup just regenerated Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As it, it's Alice in Wonderland. It's already bonkers enough. And Let's make the cup regenerate. Although I do find um, uh, the animation of when the the cup is like cut in half like butter, and yeah. the tea pours in, and you just see the like this solid wall of tea being perfectly still in this cut cup. That's just oddly satisfying to me. Maybe it is because of the fact that it is tea. Yeah, I think, I think it, I think it is really, really bizarre. But yeah, it um, makes no sense, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, and then and then we get another appearance from the um, uh, from from the white rabbit. How many? I say how many? How many is that? How many appearances is that now? That's probably like half a dozen at this point. Yeah, uh, he first appears um at the beginning. Yep. He appears um after the, the, uh, the door we're shoot to the dodo. Um, we appears again um, at uh, the house, house obviously. That's, that's three. Um, I think this might actually be the next time he appears. Like, it may, maybe there was a, another one in between, but I, I can't probably, really so, remember. Them. I said this is probably something like uh, uh, this is probably like uh, half. This is like number five or number six at this point now. Uh, maybe. But, but um, um, I loved I loved when they were um, uh, filming this scene. Um, like I say, the actors um, did their lines in the booth, and then they were doing the live action reference. Yeah. Um, but when they were doing that, Ed Wynn like ad libbed a bunch of stuff, like um, the reactions oh. to all the ridiculous, like all the reactions to the ridiculous stuff that um, uh, like putting like uh, the jam and the sh sugar sugar two spoons. Uh, Two oh, actually, yeah. when trying to repair the watch because it's actually yeah. two days slow. Yeah, yeah. So um, Edwin like ad libbed a whole bunch of that, and Walt Disney was there, and he was so impressed. He was like, "Can we um put put that in the film as well?" But the sound technicians were like, well, "I don't know. Like we're, we we might have some difficulty um drowning out some of the background noise." So Walt said, "That's your problem. You fix it." Oh. But, <laughs> Wow, uh, that just yeah. happened. 
Yeah, but um, they did. They um, put in a lot of effort, but they managed to put in all of that ad lib stuff into the final film. And and I and I and somehow they pulled it off. Yes, and I especially love when the the white rabbit uh, when um, the Marsh Hare hands him mustard. He says mustard. Don't let's be silly. <laughs> Lemon, that's different. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I mean, in all seriousness, though, they wouldn't exactly make very good watchmakers. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, dear. But, uh, but, but unfortunately, because, of ha- because, because the watch has now gone mad, yeah. uh, they, they have to actually uh, destroy it. Big mallet. Boom and on and the and the white and, rabbit and, is like, and just, no, and just my the, watch and then just the casual from that had it two days slow that's what it is <laughs> and he just he just he just passes it off as if it's nothing <laughs> oh, oh the, the the poor white rabbits like he doesn't, he doesn't he doesn't deserve any of this hassle yeah but um but uh, but of course he makes the foolish mistake of mentioning that it was an unbirthday present. Oh, dear. And, and then Alice is just like, right, I need to get out of here pronto. <laughs> oh, since yeah. they, since the, the March Hare and the Mad Hatter have yeeted the white rabbit out of there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just... Oh, dear. But... Uh... <laughs> But yeah, um, she manages to get she manages to get out. Um, but um, but she's now decided, you know, like, all right, that's it. I'm I'm done with this. Like, I I want to. I just want to get out of here now. Like, uh, how do I get out of here? Yeah, and then and then and then and then she has this path. But then you've got this uh, dog that's got like uh, a brush for a head and then a brush for a tail, just clearing the path. And she's stuck, nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah, and that's genuinely heartbreaking. That they they present like um, this parter, so she thinks finally, and then this thing comes by and just brushes it away. Yeah, that's genuinely heartbreaking. Yeah, and that's and that's where the song "Very Good Advice" comes into play. Yes. I was like, it, Which I like, it, is honestly yeah. kind of a, a, a tearjerker, in my opinion. Yeah, as it, it, it is, it is definitely one of the more emotional moments in um, Disney's catalog, especially back then. Yeah, but um, but once, but once that's uh, once that's uh, out of the way, um, Cheshire Cat reappears and advises uh, Alice to. Go see the Queen of Queen of Hearts to uh, get directions to get home. And whew, oh boy! And I love um, uh, the trick where he um, pulls down one of the branches of the tree, like uh, as if it's a drawbridge. Yeah. I say very clever how that was. How very clever how just those few seconds were put together. Mm-hmm. And I love just the how when um, the blackness of the forest, but then, like you say, the drawbridge comes down and just this like brilliant, like bit of color coming from the other side of the tree. Which which ties back into what you were seeing earlier regarding the comparisons yeah. between this and the Batman animated series. Yeah, it really makes the colors pop when you've got these very dark backgrounds. I mean, I mean, I mean, just, I mean, just seeing moments like that, and I was actually talking about them. Uh, I may have, I may have just had to tweak the scores just there, folks. <laughs> but, um, but uh, ever so slightly. But we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Just, 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 just a little bit. Yeah, but um, I say what, one of the last songs. I'm pretty sure this is one of the last songs of the um, uh, the film. If I can find yeah, it, yeah, I think. Uh... Is, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of the last songs of the um of the film. You've got um you've got you've got these you've got these cards, uh, which is it's mainly the hearts and the clubs. I don't think you see any diamonds or spades in there, but uh, they have the song "Paint the Roses Red," mm. and um and and one of the lines they're just like uh, guys, uh, don't don't tell don't tell the queen we're doing this. 
<laughs> but yeah, uh, as, I, as, as I just just a fine example of uh, of that of that meme that goes, uh, yeah, that aged well. Hmm. And I love how they even um, acknowledge that by painting the roses like that, they're, they're killing them, but that they have to do it so that they won't be killed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I say, always I say, why I say, and and once we're introduced to the Queen of Hearts, and 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 then and then there's the temper, and and you just you summed it up perfectly, Donald Trump in a dress. But my God, what? Is the obsession with beheading people? Is it like referencing another another royal figure or something? Uh, like I don't know if it's um, like lampooning any um, royal figures in particular. Just you know, like all um, bloodthirsty autocrats. You know, I don't know if it is meant to be anyone specifically. Maybe. Um, Carol had someone in mind with that, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it, it is, it is probably a reference to something, but um, but yeah, then again, probably. it might not be referencing anything at all. But um, <laughs> although one thing um, they actually um, uh, change from the book to the film is whenever mm -hmm. the queen um, orders somebody's head off in the book. Um, the the king gives like a little sigh. He's like, "You yeah, no, no, not not really. Like, just 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 let him go." Basically, they don't do that in the films. In the films, we never see it, but still, like, yeah. It's just just real, just real. I was like, I was like, I was like, it, I, was like I mean, I mean, of course, I mean, I mean, I mean, given the given the um bonkers nature of the the source material i mean to be able to be able to stick properly to the source material yeah the disney films wouldn't be what the the disney films definitely wouldn't be what we know them as today i mean i mean i mean pinocchio for instance pinocchio wasn't meant to be the way he was in the film yeah like like um as long as you know they're um staying true to the overall spirit of the source material they don't really have to be word for word as yeah. long as they've got all the essential ingredients yeah so there's that um so he um so and i love um uh the big fanfare all uh, the cards give for the arrival of the queen <laughs> yeah because they just i love that um yeah. musical sequence yeah and then, and then after, um, and then after the queen find, and then after the queen finds out that the uh, that the roses were painted red, it's uh, yeah, and, and and that's the that's the big um, joke of it. It's like uh, they accidentally planted white roses um, instead of red ones, but yeah, I don't know either either the, either the queen prefers white roses or hates hates that paint is on the roses. Yeah, let's say. But, uh, Either way, you know, the, you would have been best just to leave them alone. Yeah, but um. But then again, you know, yeah. I can imagine even if they did leave it alone and then admitted it, to their mistake, they'd have had their heads chopped off anyway. It's it's a wouldn't it, no wouldn't have made win, a difference. It wouldn't yeah, have made a, a difference. No win situation. Yeah, catch twenty two. Yeah, but um. I'll say, but I'll say once once uh, once the queen does uh, find out the tree of cards the. Uh, uh, the tray, the deuce, and the ace, they they are all taken off to get uh, beheaded. And um, she forces Alice to play a croquet match. <laughs> With flamingos. Yeah, flamingos, card guards, and hedgehogs, all used as equipment. <sighs> and, then, and then, of course... A little bit of ma and then goodness me, a little bit of I was like, I call it a bit of match fixing. <laughs> yeah, that the that the equipment is rigged in favor of the queen, but oh yeah, but with with her temper, it's probably the most ironic name you could have given her. Yeah, absolutely, and and I love um, uh, when 
you know, Alice is doing her best, but her flamingo isn't cooperating. And and she says to do, do you want us both to lose our heads? And the flamingo goes, uh-huh. <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. But uh, and then and then and then the Cheshire cat tries to cause um tries to cause and, uh, and some I, more I carnage. It's just that brief shot where it looks like the flamingo is instead using Alice as the as the mallet. Oh dear. Yeah. because uh, and I love how we never show how they got into that switcheroo, but it's it's glorious. <laughs> yeah. Just an, just another hint of the madness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but um, but then... and, and uh, doesn't the the Cheshire cat say him? You know, we can re- make her really mad. It, it, it's like the Cheshire cat wants yeah. Alice to be beheaded. Yeah, just for a laugh. Yep. Uh, but um, but they uh, but the trick that he ends up playing. We do end up, um, I'll say, sort, sort of like an, sort of like a, a sort of like a, a, sort of like a, a stable kid-friendly gag regarding this sort of thing that you, that royal figure or somebody with um, a dress falls over and you see the underwear and you're just like, yeah, very safe kids joke, but also very funny at the same time. Oh yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, with a d- definitely a classic, definitely one that's not going to get old anytime soon. No. But, but um, but once but the um, yes, but once but once uh, but once the Cheshire Cat disappears, uh, it it end up it's it ends up being um Alice that's uh, accused of playing this prank, and then yeah. uh, and then um Queen obsessed with beheading. Oh, with the head! But uh, the case is oh, my dear. Should, shouldn't, how um, about we have a trial instead? How about we have a trial instead? Yeah, just just a, just a little a little trial. <laughs> Yeah. And, and she uh, agrees just because, you know, it, it would be the, the queenly thing to do, even though everyone knows how the queen's going to make it all end. Yep. Because it's, it's, it's her kingdom, her rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Always here on my way. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, you can, you can definitely tell this is his favorite Disney film with how, with how much he's uh, quoted from it, folks. You can definitely <laughs> tell. Because, I mean... I mean, I mean that, that that's it's definitely so clear. It's, it's so see, good. It's so good. Yeah, it's so exactly. quotable. Let's see. I see that's def. Let's see. That's an indication of someone's favorite. That's a definitely an indication that it's somebody's favorite film. That you just end up hearing them quoting it. Uh, I mean, I mean, even yeah. just in regular conversation. Mm-hmm. Well, I I, I don't um, tend to bring up um, off with his head. Like, uh... yeah, that yeah, that would definitely that would definitely be a very interesting conversation opener. <laughs> Yeah, but um, you got my yeah. order wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so wait, hang on. You've got wait, hang on. I asked for boiled potatoes, not roast potatoes. Off with his Off head! With his head! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But then this ridiculous trial. Yeah, as they, as they and then they bring up uh, rule number forty-two. What about the other 41? What about the other 41 rules? What's rules, what's rules one through 41? <laughs> I get, I say, but, but then that's, each, just, that's just another thing. That's one would, left each, off. One would make, each one would make less sense than the last. Yeah, say, which, is, say, which is probably... I, yeah. I, and I love that bit where um, uh, the Mad Hatter mentions um, that today is his unbirthday, then... The king mentions it's the queen's unbirthday, so out of nowhere, they all start singing a merry, merry unbirthday, pull a kick out of nowhere. And I love how Alice just goes, Oh no, yeah, I think, I think, I think, it's just, just like this. She's just like, Oh, here we go yeah. again. I mean, face palming, yeah, Pure. that I was like, Look, I think we would all be in that city, I think we would all, we would have all done the exact same thing Absolutely. if that happened to us. Yeah, but um, but then we um, after the Cheshire Cats annoyed um, uh, the Queen of Hearts some more and put the blame on Alice. Alice realizes she still has the two bits of uh, mushroom in her pocket. 
So that so then it's a case of uh, we get we get to like the the final chase sequence of the film, and she, and it's just a case of let's get out of here. And yep, then enough, let's get out. There's crazy people wanting to cut off my head. Crazy cards and insane queen. These ridiculous hatters and hairs and that. Yeah, time and, to get out of dodge. That's it. And so just just the whole just the whole visual just the whole visual design of this sequence you yeah. just it's just like I love how, what how one it, moment uh, you're underwater yeah. then you've got like you've got this smoke and then you've got this spiral effect and you yeah. just like, I love how what ev- is going everything on? everything we've seen um, up to this point in this movie and this world pr- pretty much everything anyway comes back as like a, a best of basically yeah no, see, it's, it's it's essentially the point where the film just goes completely off the rails just snaps akin to the pink the end of the pink elephant sequence in dumbo kind of yeah no, see, no, see, it just gets to the point where it, it just snaps and you're just <laughs> like okay then this just happened um and we end up um, back where we started with uh, the locked door and the talking doorknob yeah, and then, and then we see Alice looking through the keyhole to see that you've actually got Alice sleeping. And yeah, this has this has all been um, uh, literally just a crazy dream. It was yeah. And- it was all a. Dr- it was I was like, caps lock question mark exclamation mark. It was all a dream the whole time. Yes, but like with something like this, it. You can accept it way yeah. more than it's, with something else. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Yes. And then, and then, once Alice does manage to wake up, she um, uh, she takes herself uh, and Dinah with her sister to head back home for tea. Hopefully, the tea's yeah. not as uh, hopefully the yeah, tea's for, not as bonkers for a, for, a, for a prop for a proper tea time. Thank you very much. Yes. Definitely, <laughs> definitely a property, and uh, and then th- the last little bit in my notes is that uh, this is the first time we actually see proper end credits. Yes, over over the end of an animated Disney film, and this is the first time this has actually happened since mm. since they started making these films. And uh, there we go. That is it. That we've just managed to get through the entire plot of Alice in Wonderland in roughly the same amount of time for the runtime of the film. <laughs> it was a wild ride, but we got there. Yes. So, last thing to bring up is, of course, uh, the scores. Mm. So. So like now, of course, like like and uh, like I mentioned with um, Ellie and uh, Cinderella uh, last time, uh, you don't necessarily need to agree with these scores. I mean, I mean, if you've got scores as well, we can uh, we can try and work we can try and work a fine balance between the two. So, oh, yeah. um, so the story I definitely gave an uh, the story I gave an, an eight because uh, I say it's I say like, like you said, it stays true to the spirit of the. Um, source material but there are but uh, to me there are just like uh, a few moments where you're just like this is just a bit i mean yes it's an off the rails film but there are some there are like a few moments where it's a bit too off the rails that makes sense i can kind of see um where you're coming from with that um for me i think it's just the right amount of what is this um but yeah no i would agree with um the scoring uh, eight out of ten like it's definitely more of a thing where it is just about uh the journey basically and the experience yeah. from one mad thing to the other and for some people that's not really gonna do it for them and i completely understand why yeah but um i'll say the, I'll say the next one um is, the next one for me is the uh the characters Mm-hmm. And uh, that that to me was uh, a seven, where because um, because I felt that um, I felt that like yes I felt like yes you've got you've got all these um, you've got all these characters to be introduced to but I mean I mean I mean 
unless unless you're actually a big fan of the film like you are, Alan, uh, is a casual viewer like myself going to remember all the characters that were in the film? Because I mean, I mean, you got I mean, you've well, got Alice, you've got the Mad Hatter, the White Rabbit, Cheshire Cat, Queen of Hearts. Yeah, I, I don't think. Um... No, I don't think everyone's going to remember every character. Like, um, no one's going to be quoting um, uh, the King of Hearts or or the um, or, or Bill the Lizard or anything. Yeah. But but I think um, the characters do still leave the impact that they need to. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Bill being so trodden upon and the the King trying yeah. to be a calming influence. So. I would I would give them an eight out of uh, ten as well, along with the story, because they're there. They're all there to serve their purpose. Yeah. But uh, but I would but I would agree. Like not all of them are particularly memorable. Yeah. So at least in, at least in comparison to somebody like uh, the Mad Hatter and the Queen. Yeah. So so I think. Let's strike a let's strike a nice fine balance in the middle, and we'll go for a seven point five. Yep, that's perfectly fair. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Yes. <laughs> so next up, we have got the um, the visuals. Now, I mean, I did have this as a nine, but as we kept talking about uh, the visuals more, I managed to bump that up to a ten. Yeah, and I would agree. So, um, like, uh, like perfect, perfect realization of a lot of the famous illustrations from the source material, and just, yeah. uh, but still, but still feeling like it's its own thing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think, I think the biggest thing that actually bumped it up to the ten was um, the uh, the fact that you made the the comparison to the Batman to animated that. series. Yeah, and then. And then actually seeing, and then actually describing a couple of those those examples of the comparisons between the two, that that was that was what bumped it up to the ten for me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I I would agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and uh, the next section is the soundtrack. As I, as I, as I, uh, but this one was uh, this one was um, a seven for me because it's. Um, I mean, I mean. I mean, it, I mean, I mean, for for me, when it comes to doing a, a soundtrack, uh, I want to have like a, a fine balance between the songs and uh, the music score as well. But yeah, I say, but a lot of I say a lot of the soundtrack was mainly just um, songs. There wasn't much in the way of like uh, a proper music score for the uh, for the film. Uh, and as, yeah, and as far- I, 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 I kind of know what you mean. Yeah, and, and as far as the and as far as the songs are concerned, um, they, I mean, I mean, yes, a lot of them, like we've mentioned, a lot of them are short and sweet. But uh, there's only going to be like there's only going to be like two or three that people uh, people actually they really stand out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the on birthday song, one of them, "Paint the Roses Red," the the um, uh, golden afternoon, golden afternoon, and uh, and 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 some people might even mention. Uh, very good advice, and that's about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. Like, s- same with um, uh, some of the characters. Not all of them are um, particularly memorable, but they all do still serve a purpose. So, yeah, I, I would agree with you on uh, the seven. Yeah. So the last, um, the last one to, um, the last section I to go through is the legacy of the film now i did have this um i did have this um section down as test of time when i initially when i started the series but uh, i I, but i changed it to legacy because i felt that i felt that pretty much it works better that the legacy that this film has um has left behind because i think um it's it really says something that Disney never tries to do a um, straight to uh, video sequel to this because I think there was just a sense of yeah everything we can and should do with the story we did it the first time. There you go. Um, Although interestingly enough, it wasn't that big of a box office success when it was first released. It wasn't really until 
the sixties that it kind of came into its own with a sort yeah. of cult following. Yeah, I say, I say when when you ha- when you had all the um when you had all the um uh, the uh, the hippie movement and th- things like yeah. that. That um that that people uh, taking all the um stuff they had back then um to I say and and that to them helped them appreciate the uh, the film a lot more because. Because the uh, the budget for the film was three million dollars, and mm. the, and the uh, the box office in the U.S. was on, was only five point six. Yeah, but um, but of course the um, but of course the uh, the le- but of course the legacy of the film. Where do we even begin with with this? Because there's there's a lot. There's a yeah, lot. Yeah, you know, you, you you always talk about um, like classic Disney, but. I think this really is one of the top tier classics for how much it, um, you know, perfectly captures the book, but it's still its own animal. Yeah. So I, so I think for getting that, I myself would personally give it a solid 10. Yeah. So, so, so just, so just some of the, so, uh, so like I, so like I did with Cinderella talking about like uh, the legacy of the film, some of the other references to uh, the Disney film and uh, some of the other things that it, uh, was um, brought up. The um, as far as its awards and accolades were concerned, it was nominated for an Oscar for best scoring of a musical picture, but it ended up losing out that year to an American in Paris. Which uh, me and my mum um, back in twenty seventeen, when it was the um, uh, when I was down when we were down in London for the uh, uh, World Athletics Championships, because I managed to get tickets for um, uh, f- for one of the days. Um, yeah. The, uh, and it was the day. It was uh, the Monday before we were uh, heading back home. We um, we went to the West End to see a stage adaptation of an American in Paris, and it is just it was just fantastic. Yeah, so it's easy to see why that one in particular won out. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, so to get nominated for to get to get nominated for an for an os uh, to get nominated for an Oscar is already a big achievement, for, yeah, especially no especially for a Disney film. Yeah, a Disney animated film too. Yeah, um, I say, I, I've, I've mentioned the um, I've mentioned like uh, references in other Disney films uh, briefly uh, as well. Uh, I mentioned Build a Lizard earlier, uh, yeah, uh, but there's also uh, Bill, uh, interestingly, uh, Bill, Tweedledum, and uh, the Cheshire Cat and the Doorknob all make appearances in Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. Which is actually pretty cool. Then, um, and then you've got two references in the uh, Aladdin uh, trilogy. Um, oh. Uh, and I, I will say this, folks, um, ranking the trilogy... Bottom of the list, Return of Jafar, then King of Thieves, and then the original Aladdin itself. But what are the um, references in uh, Aladdin? Well, I'm glad you asked, my friend. Uh, <laughs> uh, in the opening, where you've got Robin Williams being uh, the peddler, you uh-huh. see you see a hooker that oh. a hooker that looks very similar to the one that the, the caterpillar, the caterpillar used. is smoking from. Oh, yes. Okay. And then in the King of Thieves, you see the genie turn into the um, you see the genie turn into the White Rabbit at one point. Oh yeah, yeah. During the uh, during the uh, the first wedding scene at the start of the uh-huh. film. And um, and and one of the and one of the last references here is that you've got um, in uh, towards the end of When You Wish Upon a Star. If you pay attention to like the bookshelf that Jiminy Cricket's on, you can actually see a copy of Alice in Wonderland on the bookshelf. All right. Yeah, and there's and they're all they're all and one of the, one of the other books next to it is going to be my next film I talk about in this series. Uh, Peter Pan is also on that bookshelf as well. Ah. Yeah. And um, well, that's and, awesome. Yeah, so a clever way of hinting towards uh, future Disney projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, we've got the um, uh, there's a spin-off cartoon in development 
uh, focusing on the Cheshire Cat, which is going to be on Disney Plus. We don't oh, know. I what, didn't know that. Uh, we don't know. We don't know when this. Uh, we don't know when this spinoff is going to come into play. Uh, when it's going to be Do you know if um, Jim Cummings is voicing the cat? He may very well be, but uh, it doesn't look like there's any details on it as of on on the cartoon as of yet. Right, they're probably still working stuff like that out. Yeah, uh, we've already we've already briefly mentioned the um, uh, the live action remakes uh, where you had the live action remake of Alice in Wonderland 2010, and then in 2016 you had the sequel uh, through the Looking Glass, glass which um, didn't do as well as the. Um, as as the remake no. itself, no. Yeah. There's been um, there's been a number of theme park rides at uh, various uh, Disney parks. Yep, there's been appearances on uh, House of Mouse and Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I was about to. I was just. I was just getting on to Kingdom Hearts as well. I was just <laughs> getting on to that. You beat me to it. Fair play. There was also a, there was also an old um, there was also an older uh, Disney game called Villain's Revenge where oh yeah, I remember playing that. Yeah, uh, as an alternate reality where the villains do actually come out on top. Such a fun game. Yeah, as I um, as I um, as I try, trying to find a copy of those these days, especially trying to oh, get God, it to run, yeah. especially trying to get it to run on a Windows Ten platform. Yeah, that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be luck. fun. Good <laughs> that's luck. That's gonna be fun. But um, but yeah, and I think you mentioned Kingdom Hearts. Um, I say it featured in the foot in Kingdom Hearts One Chain of Memories. It didn't appear in Kingdom Hearts Two, but it uh, was in three five eight over two days and um, coded. As Can well. I um, quickly interrupt you to take um, a bathroom break after that tea? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. On you go. Go ahead. One hour later. And, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I wasn't um, expecting us to be going into such length about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, that kind of just happened. I think the jam in my tea was kind of a bad idea because now for some reason I can somehow touch the ceiling. Oh, God. Yeah. I was like... Well, well, uh, here's hoping this helps. Oh, ah, that's better. Hey. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, that just, yeah, that kind of just happened. Um, yeah. So you were talking about um, Kingdom Hearts. Yes. Uh, I think it's, I think Alice in Wonderland's featured in four Kingdom Hearts games Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, 358 over two days, and uh, Coded as well. Uh, and there's Catherine also... Beaumont um, voices her all those times, doesn't she? Yeah, that's I say that's 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 amazing that the that's amazing that she still managed to uh, keep that uh, childlike voice for the for the role. Of course, she's um, re she's retired um, from acting now, and I believe yeah. uh, she went into teaching. Ah, interesting. Or, or, or maybe or maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. I'm I'm pretty sure she went into teaching. Yeah. But um, all of her roles were basically now taken over by, uh, um, I can never remember how to pronounce her name, Hinden Walsh? Like, she's a, she's a fantastic voice actor, but I, I apologize if I butchered her name, but... <laughs> yeah, so, um, and, um, so some of the other video games that Alice has featured in, uh, there's Power Discs based on Alice in Wonderland for the... Uh, now defunct uh, Disney Infinity. Mm. But um, but I mean, as I, as I, when, it, when it comes to something when it comes to something like Disney fin Infinity, does anybody actually remember Disney Infinity? Because because that was meant to be a that was meant to be a competitor to the uh, the Skylanders series, and uh, Skyland yeah. and even went even even with Disney being one of the biggest corporations in in the world, they still ended up losing to uh, the Skylanders series. I'm sure it's um, one of those things where people will hear mention of it and they'll like, oh yeah, I um, I remember hearing about that. Uh, what was it again? You know, yeah, like exactly. But um, <clears throat> but I think as far but I think overall as far as the as far as the legacy of the film uh, is concerned, uh, taking into account the fact that the um, the sequel to the remake didn't do that well, and of course. Um, how forgettable Disney Infinity uh, was. Um, yes. I couldn't give I couldn't give the legacy section any higher than a nine. 
Yeah, yeah, that that's yeah, yeah, that's fair. So now that I've so now that I've had to um tweak the scores slightly. <laughs> With a little bit, with a little bit of influence at the same time. Um, so there we go. Da, 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 da. There we go. So taking into account that we've got um, a point five for one of the um, for one of the um, for one of the sections. Mm -hmm. uh, I did have the score initially at fifty, uh, not fifty, uh, eighty percent. But thanks to, uh, but thanks to actually doing this review and um, with with a, with a little bit of um, influence, uh, <laughs> it bumps, which which is actually a good thing because um, because uh, it's bumped the score from eighty percent to eighty three percent. So 83% for Alice in Wonderland, which on the scoreboard puts it essentially right smack bang in the middle. <laughs> That's actually one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, because I've because I've got two films tied for um fifth place, which essentially puts Alice sixth on the scoreboard out of the out of the 14 films that I've uh, covered so far I mean yes I am aware that I've all I've done officially 13 animated films but the reason I say 14 is because I did a Christmas special on the nightmare before Christmas right yeah so and uh, and don't worry and don't worry folks um, uh, I said it I said it during the um, nightmare before Christmas review. Christmas 2021, it's going to be The Muppet Christmas Carol. That's the film I'm going to be doing for Christmas 2021. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, there we go. That is it. Uh, everything is sorted. Scores are in. Leaderboard is updated. And now to get myself ready for uh, the uh, for um, doing this with uh, Peter Pan next time. So all right. uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw if you did hit the thumbs up and if you want to be dream chasers like the two of us hit the subscribe button down at the bottom click the bell to join the uh, dream chasers uh, notification squad so you don't miss anything that I do on this channel Alan thanks very much for joining me it has been an absolute pleasure having you thank on thank you so much for having me yeah no, it, this has been fun yeah. this has been a, a lot of fun like yeah. t talking movies and sharing stories it's what I live yeah. for yeah, that's it. That's it. I, I think I think I think we're definitely going to get you back on board for another rare uh, episode at some point in the future. I'd, I'd be delighted to. Yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll just I'll just see what slots I can. I'll just see what slots I've got um, uh, available, and I'll uh, I'll keep I, you in the loop. I, I would advise against um, bringing me on for the uh, uh, 2010 Alice in Wonderland because I have some rather heated things to say about that, and I I hmm. I can't guarantee I'd keep my cool. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, duly noted. But uh, <laughs> but but nonetheless, uh, like I said, folks, next time it's going to be uh, Peter Pan. That uh, that's going to be the uh, film of uh, choice for uh, uh, for next time. I'm going to have um, I'm going I'm to have a, another first timer on the um, on the show. Uh, he who's he's also part of the uh, streaming speakeasy group that uh, we're both part of. So he's going to be uh, with us. Yeah, he's gonna be with me for uh, Peter Pan uh, next time out. But until but until next time, folks. Uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and we will see you guys next time in the Kingdom of Isolation. See you later, guys. Take care.